opera is a relevant art form and it speaks to us whether it was written last year or whether it was written 400 years ago. But we have to sort of insist on it because I think opera has a really important things to say that are relevant to our lives today. And in this piece in particular, yes, it's talking about Kansas City and it's talking about New York and it's talking about California, but it's really talking about not only Charlie Parker's experience, but what that era was like and what that existence is like today. Operas are written about larger than life characters, not normal people being normal in a normal place. You know, it's always a larger than life atmosphere, setting, feeling, and I think this piece has that, I don't want to say godlike, but it's a universal feeling where if you take this character and you put him any, in any time period, if you take race out of it, any time period, it's a relatable character that struggle for greatness. I'm very grateful that, that Josh is here and that we get to share this role because it is very, very demanding vocally. Um, and I don't think either of us could uh, successfully sing all eight performances without a break uh, because it, it's both very high and very low and Charlie Parker never leaves the stage. It's live theater at its best because as an opera singer, you know, each night is going to be a little different anyway. But then you have back-to-back -back nights with two different Charlies, and then it's completely different stimulation. This is a total new production, because I've done them all thus far, and they've all been the same one production. Now this has been totally wiped clean, and it's exciting, and it's real, and you understand the story, and uh, it really does come to life. This is the perfect representation of where opera is going now. And I feel very lucky because it's my generation of young singers to take opera into new areas, not just a huge 2,000 person theater, proscenium theater, we're in a nightclub. It's Birdland, it's where Charlie Parker created all of his genius. It's jazzy, it's full of tunes, uh, melodies, it's relevant, it's in English. It speaks the truth, I would like to say. This piece grooves, it just grooves along, you know, and it's got catchy tunes, and I think the composer did a fantastic job of fusing together the essence of Charlie Parker and opera. The orchestration's been changed to fit the venue, but also uh, I think it serves the piece in a really brilliant way because the music sort of goes from you know, blues to ragtime to jazz to bebop and back again. And the feeling and the texture of it feels like a club. So it's, it's really perfect for this venue here in Atlanta. One of the best parts of this production and, and one of the best parts about doing it here is that since there's no real backstage or wings, she's put all of the characters on stage for the whole time. So we've really played with the lines between the characters interacting in scenes that they're not part of. So that's pretty cool. Charlie Parker's life was nothing ordinary. It couldn't fit in a box, it couldn't be explained in a clear-cut way that you could sort of put, compartmentalize and put into boxes. And so it, what the piece really captures is that wild essence of his life. And we needed a wild venue to do it in. So Paris Saint-Pence is perfect for it. I had never seen this place before and it's very whimsical. It feels like magic can happen in, in that room. So I think anyone that has the opportunity to come to this show, if you haven't bought your tickets, babies, y'all better run for them last couple of seats. So, you know, Come on, you're gonna really enjoy it and you're gonna, you're gonna be so mad that you didn't make it and maybe we'll be asked back <laughs> to reprise it here in Atlanta.